G'day everybody, my name is James, and today we're going to be restoring this 1981 Rover sedan, and I'm joined here with my best mate, Hugh Jeffries. G'day everybody. As it currently stands, this 1981 Rover has been infested with rats, and you can see the amount of damage and mess they've left behind. So this car has been sitting at my grandparents' farm for about 10 years, but the property recently got sold, so now the car has been moved to my place for us to work on it. The outside of this car isn't in too bad nick, it's just a little bit dirty and the tyres are flat. I reckon with a little bit of TLC and some work we can get this car back up and running and hopefully get it on the road again in the not too distant future. So this is part one of a series of videos I'm going to be doing on this Rover, so make sure you subscribe and stick around to see them when they come out. Without any further ado, let's get started on episode one of the free Rover restoration. So earlier this year we made a video on Hugh's channel exploring this abandoned farm and we also showed a little bit of this rover and if you want to see that video I'll leave the card up in the top corner. So now that the property had been sold it was time to take the car home. So with the tyres unable to be pumped up and the engine not running it did make it extremely hard to load it onto the trailer so we had to use a winch. Once we got the rover loaded onto the trailer we decided to meet the guy back at home where we could unload it. But unfortunately, when we got home, the car did not want to get off the trailer, so we had to push a little bit to the front wheels got on the ground, then we could just drive the trailer away. Alright, so it's the next day. We got this thing off the trailer last night. We had a bit of trouble with it. It's been sitting in our yard for last night. So now, right now, we're just going to have a bit of a look around it. This was my granddad's old Rover, and we reckon it was sitting out the farm for about 10 years. So it's been sitting for a while. Um, we'll have a look at the bonnet. Some of the spark leads are chewed through, some of the other wires are being chewed through as well. And I don't think any of the spark leads are actually producing spark, but anyway, we, um, we'll sort that out a little bit later. So most of the tyres are actually pretty flat, they're completely off their rim, so I couldn't pump them up when I was out at the farm yesterday. But um, we'll take them off and we we'll, should be able to get them back to normal. We also have a spare tyre which we can put on one of the wheels. Right, so here's the inside. Um, we've got, it's just absolutely atrocious smelling. It's filled with all rat poo and all the crusty stuff that the rats brought in. It's chewed through some what looks like oil bottles. We've got some records in there. And also a relay here, which is probably half the reason why the um, car actually won't start. In the, in the back here, we've got a bunch of stuff, more rat poo, more shit that the rats dragged in. We also have a bit of an engine in there, not actually quite sure what that's off. More towers and buckets, and there's even a fire extinguisher in there. Alright, so we'll have a look in the boot now. A uh, little bit hard to get at, but there's a little switch under there. We'll open it up, still smells terrible. But, um, got a few things in here. We've got a broom handle, which I'm guessing was to hold up the boot. Got a couple of what looks like record players, and if we actually look under here, we we'll see there's actually another spare tyre. So, that's pretty good. But the rat has gone insane in here as well. He's um, chewed for another what looks like oil bottle. This speaker over here is about to fall out. And there's also some wires over there which have been chewed through, I think. But anyway, nothing that doesn't look too bad to fix. So as it currently stood, this Rover was sitting on James's front lawn. So in an attempt to move it, we're going to need to swap the tire over here on the back with one of the spares. This is because it won't pump up with the pressure inflator. Now we were lucky enough that two of the other tires did pump up, however the front left one did not inflate no matter how hard we tried. One actually stayed up for quite a long period of time before eventually going flat again. Now these tires hadn't been taken off in a long time so we had a little bit of difficulty in trying to get the wheel off the hub. Now another problem faced with this car was the fact that it's so low to the ground. So we actually had to do something a little bit dodgy and jack up the spring on the rear axle so we could actually fit the spare tire on. But with enough luck, it actually worked and we could tighten up the lug nuts once again. With the lug nuts installed and tightened, we can then apply some air into the tire which will just help it keep inflated as it was a little bit low on the PSI reading. So now it's time to clean out the car and the first thing we do is just give it a quick vacuum and we'll come back in a later episode and give it a proper steam clean.
All right, so it's time to clean out the back. I'm gonna let James vacuum this up. Trim needs a little bit of repairs. Gee, what's this thing? I don't wanna know what they're using this for. Our first use. That's gross. It is, it's coming straight within. You're right, and we've got a bucket which has been half chewed through as well. Geez, they've gotten through every bit of plastic container, you name it, they've chewed on it. Yeah. What have we got here? We've got a... Sort of bag, is it? Yeah, or? a little bag or something. Um, I don't really want to know I don't really want to open it, but there we go. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. But and a fire extinguisher? Yeah. What have we got? Oh, we're all good to go. Might, that, might let that one off later. <laughs> um, yeah. Jeez. Wow. That's insane. We wouldn't want to sit in that in a hurry, would you? Well, I'd hope not. Look at here. I think this is an old cigarette lighter we got here. Oh, yeah. It can uh, go in the front, actually. We'll keep that. And uh, apart from everything else, I'm going to put the seats forward and uh, back them up everything then. All right, so that's been day one. We've gave the inside a bit of a clean. Got some tires, well, we've got three tires, one of which is sort of leaking, and that last tire we don't have one to put on there at the moment, but at least it's sort of off the ground and we still can't move it anywhere, so it's still stuck on your front lawn. Alrighty then, it's time to get underway under the hood. Now, yesterday I didn't record it, but um, I took off all the spark leads from the distributor to the spark plugs obviously and took out one of the spark plugs. I've been to the auto parts store and got some more spark plugs and spark leads. So now we're just going to take out the other seven spark plugs, put in some new spark plugs and we should be raring to go. Yeah, one step closer to a working engine. All right, let's get this show on the road. Now the gas strut for this bonnet doesn't work so we're going to go a bit of a bit of a dodgy over here and use the old garden tool to hold it up. There we go, let's just put that right there. Oh, look at that. That's all raring to go until it falls on someone's fingers and then we've got a trip to the hospital. But till then, let's get uh, everything on the road. Yep, let's go. Okay, so taking out spar plugs is really easy. All you need to do is just grab the right size socket then just turn it with the ratchet until they come out. If you are going to do a change of spar plugs, make sure that you get the right one and make sure you read the little code on the side so you know which one to get. You may not need to grab all new plugs, but we just decided to because this car has been sitting for 10 years and we do not know what the service history was on it. So with all the old plugs out and the new plugs in, it's trying to connect them up to the distributor using the spark leads. But of course that didn't work out as planned. Alright, so we got a new distributor cap because the old one was a bit bugger now, wasn't it Hugh? Yeah, well we tried to get these old spark plug leads out, but they were a little bit corroded in there and uh, that didn't turn out too well, did it? No, no, we ended up destroying the, um, the middle part. section piece, isn't it? Like where the uh, coil actually plugs in. So. We've had to order a new, a new one. Which is by Bosch, and it's in this fancy packet. Oh, I shouldn't say fancy, it's not very fancy. It's a <laughs> cardboard box with a bit of paper around it. Um, oh, there we go. Well, we're losing the box. We don't need that anyway. Uh, here's the new distributor cap. 
looks exactly identical to the old one. So let's go change that now and hopefully we'll be able to get it going. So under the hood, we'll need to remove the old broken distributor cap, which had the old spark plug leads uh, sort of corroded in their spots. With the new one installed, it was a bit of a guessing game when it came to wiring up all of the cylinders. James did have a couple of pictures of the ones that actually were still connected. However, some of those had been chewed off by rats. So now it's time to attach some jumper leads to the car and we're using a big bus battery for over 200 amps. So that should definitely get some cranking power out of that. But because the rat chewed through a fuel line, we had to attach a funnel and tip petrol down it that way, as the car was not getting any from the petrol tank. So with the petrol and the car beat, it's time for Hugh to give it a crank. <laughs> However, we still had no luck with that method, so we decided to take off the air box on the side so we can slosh some fuel down the carby and also fiddle with the air intake. She wants to. I'm going to help her along. Oh, I need that. So, with a bit of luck, the engine actually started running. So, now that we know the engine works, it's time to connect the fuel line back to the petrol tank so we don't have to use a funnel to start the engine. Dodgy James is trying to heat up the pipe to make it softer, but doesn't have a heat gun. But we've got a blowtorch. That's right. This is dodgy at its finest. Yeah, the water's there for safety, guys. They think. <laughs> it's only a fuel line, it's okay. Yeah. If you can't fix it with duct tape, try a blowtorch. What's the worst that could happen? Is it softer? A little bit. Had to give her a few more berries. Don't burn yourself, James. So you want tea to the rescue, boys? Yeah. Give me the hose. Hold the hose. Ow, oh, fuck! Get yeah, hot. Okay, so with the fuel line connected, it's time to top up the tank and see if she'll run. Okay, so we still had no luck with that method, so we had to switch back to the funnel. We think it may be a fuel pump that is stopping the petrol from working its way up to the engine. Okay, so now that the beast is up and running, it's time to move it to some solid ground so we can put some new tyres on it, which I've already ordered. Now because this car's been sitting on James's front lawn for about two months now, it dug itself a little bit of a hole. Now we still couldn't get that front left tyre pumped up, but we had to try and move it anyway. The only problem was it kept ripping a skid on the rear right tyre, which of course you can't see on camera. Now James's dad helped us out here pushing behind the car so we could get it out of the ditch. With a little bit of persuasion, it actually started moving, although it made some quite horrific noises, but it was rolling nevertheless. So now with the car onto the concrete, it's time to change over the tyres. I ordered these on Monday and they came here three days later, it's ready for an install. Alrighty folks, it's time that I show off my big guns and undo these lug nuts. This was the only tyre we didn't have to take off and as you can see, they were actually on there quite tight. With all the tyres lug nuts loosened, we can insert a jack under the front of the car and start to jack up one half. Okay, so one problem we have with jacking up the car is there's barely any jacking points on this car which makes it extremely hard. And then we ran into another problem where my jack stands were way too huge to actually put under the car. That's what you get for buying truck jack stands and trying to jack up a small little car with it. Well, they were cheap, so we got them. So it was time to improvise, so we just got some blocks of wood, stuck them under the car, and there's your jack stand. After we had the car up off the ground enough, we could take off the front tyre and remove it from the car. It was a little bit stuck on there, so we had to get a block of wood at the back to knock it off. With the tyre removed, we can wheel it away and load it in the back of James's Commodore so we can get the new one put on. 
and we did exactly the same process on the other side. I think it's time to install the wheels, eh? I think it is too. So installation is the opposite of removal, so just tighten up those lug nuts with a ratchet, even though I own an impact gun, I just forgot I had it even not seen right beside me. And for this second front tyre, I had to get big guns in to give us a hand. Lifting up the tyre, we can install the lug nuts once again, just loosely hand tightening them before we come back with a ratchet, because yet again, James forgot he had an impact gun. Okay, so with the car lowered down, it's time to bust out the breaker bar and tighten these bolts down to spec. Okay, with the front two tyres are changed now, it's time to jack up the back and we had to use a scissor jack because there is zero jacking points up the back. Anyway, take this tyre off, and I seem to have found my impact gun for this, take this one off and then put on a new one and we're ready to rock. Now it's about time I jumped in and helped get some more camera time, so I loosely hand tightened some more lug nuts onto the new tyre. And now of course James has misplaced his impact gun again, so he came back with a ratchet and tightened him up. Okay, so now it's time to take off the last tyre, and as you can see, this rim looks a lot different than all the other ones. Fortunately, the spare tyre had the same design as the other three, so we're going to be using that one from now on. With all four new tyres installed, we can already see a difference of the before and after shots on this 1981 Rover. It's made quite a significant difference already. Okay, so the car can't live on the driveway forever, so now that it's actually got some new tyres on it, we can drive it. So we're going to put a little bit of petrol down there and drive it to a spot where it's no longer in the way. <laughs> Alright, so that's the end of episode one. Uh, we did a fair bit. We uh, cleaned out the interior, uh, changed the tyres, changed the tube cap, got the engine running. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it was actually a fair bit of work. So uh, thank you to Hugh. Oh, that's alright James. It's been great work. I just had some experience with a, an old Dodge that I did up with my dad, but it's great to actually get back into it and do something a bit different than uh, fixing up phones like I always seem to be doing. Yeah. And i help you out. So basically the fundamentals are in but we just got to fix that fuel pump and a couple other things to get it driving brakes are probably another good one yeah, so you don't one. nearly run me over moving, <laughs> the, moving it here um, um off yeah. the front wall and we'll eventually get to steam clean on the inside because that's absolutely disgusting it smells oh, yeah. terrible that's pretty bad yeah uh, she's uh smells awful because of because of that rat that was in there all the rat pee in the seat vacuumed up all the rat poo but you know all the rat pee still there so uh, oh yeah the smell oh. absolutely terrible <laughs> knock you out nearly yeah. <laughs> right so everyone thank you for watching this video uh, make sure you subscribe and turn on that bell and uh we'll see you again in part two all right see us Oh, that's compressed. <laughs>
Gonna have to put on the safety hood. 